Call to order the Public Improvement Commission hearing of May 11th, 2017. First item is a poll hearing on a petition by Eversource Energy to relocate one utility pole on Mitchell Street, South Boston, located between Old Colony Avenue and Frederick Street. Good morning. My name is Sheila Gillis, and I'm here on behalf of Eversource. Uh, we request a grant of location to relocate pole 465 over 4 on Mitchell Street. Uh, the relocation is necessary due to the construction at 232 Old Colony Ave. Which of these poles, the one, the tall one? Um, no. The pole that you are trying to relocate, in, is, is it the one that has the high voltage lines on the top? Mm -hmm. or? There's a pole behind the, uh, in the construction area. So you are fine with it? Yes, that's it. Okay. Thank you. Right. Any other questions or comments? Name your time. Yes. I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the petition by Eversource Energy to re relocate one utility pool on Mitchell Street, South Boston, located between Old Colony Avenue and Frederick Street. Second. All, All in favor? Aye. So moved. Thanks, Ms. Gills. Thank you. The next item uh, is a public hearing continued. This is on a petition by Seaport Square Development Company, LLC, for the making of specific repairs within Seaport Boulevard, South Boston, located within the center median between Sleeper Street and East Service Road consisting of curb realignment, roadway reconstruction, as well as new, relocated, and reconstructed pedestrian ramps, street lights, street trees, street furniture, and landscaping, as well as irrigation infrastructure and traffic signal infrastructure. This was new business on March 30th, 2017, and had its first public hearing on April 27th, 2017. It was as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repair Plan, Seaport Boulevard Median, South Boston, three sheets dated February 2017. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission. I'm Peter Kohansky from Goldston and Stores. I'm here on behalf of Seaport Square Development Company, uh, which is the master developer of the Seaport Square project in South Boston. Um, joined by Amy Prange from SSTC and John Schmidt from Niche Engineering. We are here seeking approval of cha changes to the specific repair plan for the median within Seaport Boulevard um, from between Sleeper Street and East Service Road. The commission approved specific repairs for the median adjacent to blocks B and C, which is um, the Sleeper Street end in January 2014, and for the median adjacent to block F, which is District Hall, the Innovation Center in March 2015. Um, Seaport Square Development Company acquired the undeveloped Seaport Square blocks in um, October of 2015. Um, and has recently filed a notice of project change for the remaining blocks. One of the main goals is to enhance and improve upon the pedestrian experience within Seaport Square, keeping it pedestrian friendly while also making sure that it uh, does its job in terms of uh, traffic and uh, truck routes on, on Seaport Boulevard. So these changes to the median are sort of a first step in that direction. Since new business, we've been working to address questions um, about the landscaping and other design features within the median. Uh, today, we're going to ask for um, approval of the curb lines, some of the subsurface conditions, um, but hold off on asking for approval for the street trees, the street furniture, and the landscaping until we finalize the design. And we hope to be back to you very soon um, with those changes. Since new business, we've also had discussions with BTD about whether there should be left turn pockets um, on Sleeper Street uh, to Sleeper Street and Thompson Place. We're proposing not to include those initially. We don't um, think that they're warranted at this time, but the plans show those as an alternate, and if traffic conditions warranted them in the future, we would uh, be able to implement them at the developer's cost, obviously. So with that, unless there are initial questions, I'll turn it over to John. and. Uh, just a point of clarification. Yeah. So the plans which you are showing today, that has trees per the petition. You don't want us to. Correct. Correct. They're they're In withdrawing heavy. street trees, street furniture, and landscaping from consideration today. Okay, so we make sh so when we read. Correct. When we make the motion. Yep. Yeah. So we anything other than the curb line and the height of the structures. Yes. The street trees, street furniture, and landscaping will be removed. Everything else is we're voting on. 
and we are going to keep track of this how when the new next bit is. I can keep track of this. <laughs> Me too. Right, so we, uh, we revised the plans earlier this week and resubmitted them today, indicating only the curb improvements and silent on the median landscape improvements. Seeking approval for the curb improvements, street light layout, um, below grade irrigation, um, and some other um, subsurface minor utility improvements. As presented on the plan before you, um, the plan, this, the first page shows our intent is to um, not provide a turn lane, but as Mr. Kohansi indicated later in the set, we do show the alternate on page three, where should there be a need to install the curb lane, uh, the turning lane, the green line is attached right there. So as we proceed with the median uh, surface improvements, we will be sure not to provide permanent landscape in those areas in case that has to be back in the future in regards to street trees and things structure and foundation. Including the irrigation system also is to come in the future? Yeah, the irrigation systems, yeah. So the landscape stuff's not going to get voted by the irrigation system is? Correct. The, actually, we've already voted on the irrigation system. Uh, so, John, can you go to page three on that thing, please? The height of the page three, next one. The curb median height. Yes, curb median height. Uh, there are areas where it's uh, eight and a half inches, and there are other areas where it's nine inches and eight and a half inches. So. And this is the interior median where there's no parking along the median. It's strictly an aisle for traffic. So doorways are not visible. Median on the street. Correct. That nine inches, I think, is higher than what we normally use in the absence of an offset, in the absence of 11 foot lanes. So I think that needs to be adjusted. We've, um, this was raised to us uh, at one point, and we went back to the city asking specifically who made that request, and no one responded. Um, it came up in a meeting, it's a note somewhere. So we're looking for someone who, where, where is that requirement? That's okay, so if you look at uh, roadway design standards, for having an offset of six inches, John, I think you know this. If not, I find the necessary information. That height is too high. If a car hits it, it's not a mountable curb in the truer sense of it, and you don't have an offset, nor do you have the full lane width. So for that reasons, you can't have it at nine inches. Okay. And um, John, who did you ask from the city? Uh, just, just point of curiosity later. Yeah, I don't we, want we, to. We, we, we okay. got mine that. Thank you. Sorry. Um, Brian Beisel just walked in from HSH just a minute late, and I just wanted him to step up to clarify what we have at the for curb um, height and what the lane width is. Yeah, so there's with the. I'm sorry, yes, sir. Uh, sir, Brian Beisel from Howard Sun Hudson. Uh, with the new layout with the, the bike lanes on the outside of the parking, there's two ten and a half foot lanes. We used to have a half foot shoulder. So I heard earlier that there was the median, the left turns uh, weren't warranted. Who did the warrant analysis? Right, so the, the left turn volume onto Thompson doesn't exist right now, and then the left turn onto Sleeper does exist. It's a very low volume, maybe not turn onto Sleeper. And then for the future volumes, we did project the traffic based on the routes that we thought people would take with an open Thompson and with Sleeper Street, and we still don't expect a, a high volume there. And who did you share that information with? That was in the NPC that was just filed. Um, so BT planning has seen it. Yeah, about, so we actually about did. about engineering? We, like we did, Don met, Burgess? Yeah, we met with Don Burgess, and he's the one who asked for the alternative um, so that we're showing both curb lines so we know where the left turn lanes would be of the, if they're warranted um, without knowing how the circulation of Thompson and Sleeper are going to work and what's going to happen with the loading at the Children's Museum. We just didn't want to put one in yet. Did you show them the, the whole analysis, like where your delta and how you came to, to basically assume where those trips were going? Right, so it was in the NPC, and then it's also Don Burgess and BT Engineering have as part of their signal design review. So they have the same volumes that were in the NPC and the same analysis. Um, in there, we did go through the steps. We haven't gotten comments from engineering to say where exactly where all the volumes are going, but we can provide more detail if they need it. So he hasn't been presented with a delta? Um, it's in the appendix, so he'd have to do the, the delta himself. Well, you didn't provide a summary on that? No. Punchline, the height six inches, the lane markings is a function of time and usage. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So yes. Yeah, so, so when we submit the mileage, we show it six inches. Thank you, sir. Who is staffing the plans, John? Oh. 
Thank you. And just to be clear about what would trigger the installation of the left-hand turn lanes, it's if and when the Boston Transportation Department thinks that they are warranted in the future. Okay. And you're agreeing to do that? Yes. yes. Are there other questions or comments? Amy or Todd? No. Members of the public? <coughs> Um, I'll entertain a motion on this item, uh, except for on the street trees, street furniture, and landscaping <laughs> components. Make a motion to approve the petition by Seaport Square Development Company, LLC, for the making of specific repairs within Seaport Boulevard, South Boston, as read into the record by the chair, and uh, shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repair Plan, Seaport Boulevard, Median, South Boston, three sheets dated February 2017. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank so you. moved. Thank, Thank you. you. The next item is on a petition by Level 3 Communications LLC for a grant of location with lead company status and no participants to install new telecommunication conduit with city shadow within Congress Street, South Boston. Located between Farnsworth Street and Stilling Street, this was new business on April 13th, 2017, with a first public hearing on April 27th, 2017. As shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Granted Location Plan, Congress Street and Thompson Place, Boston, three sheets dated April 20th, 2017. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, ben Whitaker, Level 3 Communications. Uh, level 3 is requesting a uh, grant location to place 543 feet of conduit on Congress Street between Farnsworth Street and Stilling Street. This is in order for Level 3 to get cable into the Seaport area for various customers we have in Seaport. Point of clarification from the original Level 3 dig which you all did 10, 15 years ago. Yes. Was Congress Street this part of Congress no, Street? It wasn't. wasn't. No. It was just in front of City Hall where you put all your yeah, assets. Yeah, it's just downtown Boston. But you didn't cross the Fort Point we Channel? Didn't. No. Thank you, sir. Questions, comments? Yeah. Amy or Todd? No. Members of the public? I'll let her get a motion. I'll make a motion to approve a petition by Level 3 Communications LLC for a grant of location with lead company status and no participants to install new telecommunication conduit with City Shadow, within Congress Street, South Boston, located between Farns Farnsworth Street and Stilling Street, New Business 413, 2017, public hearing 427, 2017, as shown in a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Grant of Location Plan, Congress Street, and Thompson Place, Boston, three sheets dated April 20, 2017. Second. All in favor? Aye. So moved. Thank, Thank you, Ben. The third item is on a petition by the Sharon Street Abutters for a roadway betterment to upgrade Sharon Street Hyde Park between Dale Street and Wyndham Road from a private way to a public way. Uh, this was new business on April 13th, 2017 and had a public hearing on May 2nd, 2017. Mr. Chairman, uh, a subset of the IC Commission members met on May 2nd regarding this public hearing. Ms. Cording will give a summary of it in a nutshell, the petition it was denied, respectfully denied, because there was insufficient interest. That's right. We had 19 abutters. Uh, 13 of them participated. 11 said no. Two said yes. Uh, the vote did not pass. So given the vote that was taken, um, I'd entertain a vote to deny this petition. Respectfully denied. Without prejudice. Second. Moving on to the public hearing section. First item is on a petition by the trustees of Boston University for the making of specific repairs within Granby Street, Boston proper, located on its westerly side, generally between Back Street and Bay State Road, consisting of curb and sidewalk reconstruction, as well as new and relocated specialty pavers, street lights, street trees, irrigation infrastructure, and mountable curb. This was new business on April 13, 2017. This is as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division. Specific repair plans, Granby Street, 225 Bay State Road, Boston, two sheets dated April 2017. Good morning, I'm Paul Rinaldi from Boston University. I'm here with Chelsea Christensen, the engineer. 
university is planning to make renovations to its building at, two, at uh, 25 Bay State Road. And along with that, some improvements are being uh, recommended for what that's built about 1905, was constructed, and it has been a function facility for the university for a number of years. The project really is focused on making the building accessible uh, from early inside, along with a small addition outside and some improvements in uh, uh, repair and restoration work uh, throughout the facade. The, um, I'll introduce Chelsea and let her go into the details of her improvements. Good morning, I'm Chelsea Christensen from Niche Engineering. We are proposing to remove the existing brick sidewalk and replace it with a concrete sidewalk with a porous paper strip along the back of the curb. The existing granite curb will be removed and reset in the same location. We are also proposing two street trees with irrigation. Um, and there is one section of the curb will have a sloped granite um, reveal to allow for hand trucks to be pulled into the rear of the building. On a city street, Chelsea? Yes. For what length of site? It's 12 feet. It's actually an existing opening. Right now, it's Curb cut. We're closing the curb cut and just having a, a, a sloped granite curb instead of an open. Separate conversation, sort of type. There's a street called Back Street in the yes. map. Bay. Does any of your assets, meaning the university's assets, about Back Street by any chance? So, you know the street I'm speaking of, right? Back Street yes, is a exactly. private street. So Back Street, as I understand it, begins right here mm -hmm. and <clears throat> moves easterly chunk by chunk. Sometime in, I think, the mid-70s, the university acquired this portion of Back Street. So it is at this line, the transition between the public way, Granby, and the private way, was University. A number of university properties are along Bay State Road. Basically, road from here to actually into Kenmore Square. So, as those properties extend, as the university owns those properties, our ownership, I believe, goes onto the back street with easements for others. To the extent which you, to the extent which you can give consideration, the private parts of back street may be needing some attention. And uh, to the extent which you can, something like that. Yeah. To the extent which you can, because we cannot impose such uh, needs or desires, but you all are such a great neighbor within the community, and uh, any consideration can be always appreciated. Commencement time <laughs> around the campus right now. It is that rejuvenation time. Typically, we fill in those potholes and make things improve for any of the private, the private. Uh, Ali, truly, truly appreciate that foresight and that uh, commitment on your part. Thank you. Any other questions? Is there an LMI for granting? It is in process. It is in process, okay. And that would improve the maintenance of the porous uh, sidewalks? Yes. Are there existing parking meters? There Those are. are parking, so that doesn't show on the plans relative to laying it out with the new street tree uh, locations? Yes, yeah, so being reset the in the existing locations, I can put some dimensions on there, if that helps. Just, just to verify that the trees aren't interfering with the layout, because that's happened many times in the past. Have you received any comments from the commission, say like Steve Shea, prior to... Yes, we um, coordinated with Steve Shea prior. Um, we had actually added in some details about the irrigation in response to oh, his comments. Yeah. How, how's the under drain? It just states being connected to storm drain. Are you it's being connected to um, the drain system that we're putting on site for the stormwater recharge system. So it's being coordinated with site plan approval? Yes. Okay. It has. The roof drains come along this sliver of, of private property that we have. The irrigation, the infiltration system is back in here, and then there's an overflow that comes out to this manhole. And 
Steve made the comment to show the irrigation and the cross connection and provide the plan with the irrigation and this they submitted that to his response. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Any other top? Members of the public. I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the petition by trustees of Boston University for the making of specific repairs within Granbury Street, Boston proper, is read at the record by the chair, and is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division, specific repairs plan, Granby Street, 225 Bay State Road, Boston, two sheets dated April 2017, with the caveat that uh, we get the layout for the meters uh, in plan. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank, Thank you. Yes. Thank you. The next item is on a petition by Comcast of Boston, Inc. for a grant of location with lead company status and no participants to install new telecommunication conduit with city shadow within Tremont Street, Boston proper, located generally between Bromfield Street and Court Street. This was new business on April 13, 2017. This is as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Grant of Location Plan, Tremont Street, Boston, three sheets dated April 19, 2017. Good morning. Good morning. Tim Corthell, Utility Coordinator for Comcast of Boston. Uh, good morning. Tim Kelly, VP of Government Affairs for Comcast. Uh, we're here requesting approval for uh, grant location, approximately 650 feet, uh, four, four inch conduit down Tremont Street. Um, last week we were able to, excuse me, last week we were able to confirm that we, Verizon, MC, MCI, Metro, AT&T would not be able to support the capacity that we need for the two 864 uh, fiber to run down to uh, make that inner ring for the downtown area. So the question was, within those ducts that they installed, their city shadow, is there any availability? So there, there was a one, 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 one fourth inch conduit that's left with capacity. I guess AT&T has been leased out as well as but MCI is Metro. It, is City of Boston shadow within the duct? That's uh, what, that was the question. So if it's a four inch that the city owns as part of their in installation, it's not going to be AT&T making that deal. It's going to be the city. But further to what Commissioner Hispert said, how many, what capacity do you need? Do you need so three, four inches? It would be at least four. Oh, it'd be, and there's only one four inch that is. Left. There was one. Well, there's one one and one fourth inch conduit. Okay. That's that's available. So even if you were going to rent City Shadow, you still need more capacity. Correct. The two eight sixty four fibers. Words in your mouth. I just want clarification on. Yeah, what yeah. You're two eight sixty four fibers are at least an inch and a half in diameter, and if we were to go around bends or whatnot, it wouldn't be able to support it. How long will this work take? Uh, depending on um, uh, average conditions. Within weekends, if it's weekends, it would probably it would be at least three to four weekends. Depending on, again, depending on time that we can, or if it's night work or whatnot. Yeah. Just to, just to the further problem, it's kind of a systemic thing. I'm starting to need to do some homework on is the existing city shadow and where it is and who has it and where it is. I mean, Amy, I don't know if you can comment on it, but... We just mapped it. You got the maps? Yes. How do we, how do we get access to that? Uh, on the city's website. Um, so, yeah, we just, like, it, this is a very recent thing um, that we just went through, scanning and mapping of our city shadow conduit. So does, um, it, does so that break it down as to what's being utilized and what, what's available? Uh, no. Virtually none of it's being utilized, um, and so it will hopefully continue to proliferate with. Um, but we do not, in fact, have enough city shadow capacity to make the run that they're looking to make. But I, I'm just thinking there's multiple duck banks that, that yes, are in the yeah, area. No, yeah, um, and yes. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, well, we, that's that's good news. Yeah, then. so yeah. that's something so that was we're push. we are moving ahead. Perfect. Back <laughs> that question. Uh, Tim, is, how does one, how will it be clear which of the uh, conduits is the city shadow conduit is the one that's available for the, for the city? Um, is, it, is it visually indicated in any way on the conduit itself? Or? So 
Is for the one that's going to be empty? Or? So it was MCI, uh, so MFS McCourt is who owns yeah. the, the, the run that was in question. Yeah. Um, we were able to get them out there to, to pop the hole. Yeah. We saw what they had for capacity, and also they, they could even lease it out, or nine out of 10 times, we're, we're not able to tell exactly what they have in their holes, not owning it. I think about with what you're proposing to build, how will we, how will we know which of the, which of the available the products? Exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So of the four, so, do right. they all look the same? Right. Is the city one, is it paint and blue? Or like in years past, we asked for a cot four, yeah. you know, the ducts that has four pots. So that is different from everyone else's insulation. And we were sub, we, were, we the city, were able to sublease, sublease individual components or compartments, and it looked different. So Amy, what's happening now? Uh, so we have gone back and forth on our standard, but we are at the quad duct as okay, our so standard. So our city shadow in yes, this Yes, and we also require the ducting diagram where one specific duct is labeled city shadow. Right. So if you put in four, you label the bottom right one city okay. shadow, okay. and that's That's our, what yeah. And but per what the chief said, visually, it cannot be your four inch. You can have three, three four inch, and one hot hose. But Amy, maybe. Yes. Any other questions, comments? Any other comments? No, we're good. Members of the I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve a petition by Comcast of Boston Incorporated for a grant of location with lead company status and no participants to install new telecommunication conduit with City Shadow within Tremont Street, Boston Proper, located generally between Bromfield Street and Court Street, new business 413, 2017, as shown in a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Grant of Location Plan, Tremont Street, Boston, three sheets dated April 19, 2017. Second. Aye. Thank you. The third item is on a petition by 399 Congress Street, LLC, for the making of specific repairs within Congress Street, South Boston, located on southerly side at address number 399, generally between East Service Road and B Street, consisting of curb realignment, sidewalk, roadway, and pedestrian ramp reconstruction, as well as new and relocated specialty pavers, street lights, street trees, street furniture, landscaping, irrigation infrastructure, and driveway curb cuts. This was new business on April 27, 2017. Is that shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repair Plan 399 Congress Street, South Boston, two sheets dated February 2017. Hi, good morning. Good morning. I'm Chris Machado from Goldstone & Stores here on behalf of 399 Congress LLC, the developer of this project. I'm joined by Manny Zacharias from the developer and by John Schmidt from Niche Engineering. Others of the project team are also here to answer your questions as they may arise. Uh, we were here two weeks ago for new business. I'll give you a brief overview of the project to reacquaint you with it. It's the construction of a multi-story, 22-story uh, mixed-use tower, 414 apartments, 12,000 square feet of ground floor accessory uses, including retail, 144 space, a subterranean garage, and associated amenities and site improvements. The project is uh, located uh, along Congress Street, a portion of which is controlled by MassDOT. We're here for specific repairs uh, for the area between B Street and East Service Road. We've been working with MassDOT to seek their approval of access permits and the project is almost fully permanent. We've gone through BPDA approval, and we are now obviously before PIC because we understand that this portion of Congress Street will eventually be transferred to city control, and so we are here for your approval. John Schmidt can go over the approval, the requests in more detail, uh, but I will note two things. When we were here last uh, two, two weeks ago, there were two issues that came up. One was the BTD approval of this traffic signal plan. We've submitted a letter from Don Burgess that he has approved that plan. There was also an issue of irrigation black backflow prevention. That's also been approved, and we also have those plans on file, just so that you know. So with that said, I'll turn it over to John Schmidt, and he can run through the uh, proposed improvements. The sidewalk improvements, uh, the sidewalk improvements are consistent with construction of the five-foot concrete sidewalk that's uh, accessible. Furnishing zone that will include uh, some raised planters, some curvious pavers, um, some new street lighting, and some uh, reset street lighting. Also, uh, there's a curb cut here that allows end traffic to enter and exit, and a curb cut within the median that allows the current buildings um, from Congress Street into the site. Uh, as Chris indicated, that he has approved the traffic signals and water sewers approved the cross connection application. Uh, so, we'll open the questions. 
one of the other questions was specific to the street trees, visibility. Uh, street trees here, the branches of the trim tree above the, the sight lines of the passing by. We asked you to do a little bit of an analysis on the uh, sight distance for the placement of the landscaping plan as it relates to the uh, traffic plan. In regards to people that the property? So if you're going to the crosswalk and you got trees that yeah. off high speed off ramp coming off the highway system, the visibility for that pedestrian for both vehicular and for the pedestrian indication. So if that guy has a green, he's coming through. So okay. we'll, we'll it's a concern. Right okay, we'll provide the those things right to your next line. Amy, do we have an executed LMI by now or is it still being flushed? Uh, so it's still in process and this LMI would take effect when we receive these street back from the central artery transfer. Right. This is right between the ramps, ah. so this is still, yeah. But it's in draft and we'll work with which yeah. to so, address any concerns. Yeah, we're in draft. So it's pretend that it is ours, so before we move, move forward, please ensure that it is executed to our satisfaction. Sure. So that it doesn't become something which we need to deal with later on. Of that course. Is okay with you. We'll work to get it in the final form. Thank you, sir. So, for the developer, when are you uh, planning on breaking ground? Um, right now, we're waiting for the temp access permit um, from MassDOT, uh, and I think it's this week we will see that. So we have four weeks of site mobilization, um, and we're ready to go. We're just pending MassDOT approval. So I know that uh, I've been talking to MassDOT District Six. Yes. They want to know about the median break? Yes. That's that's not an early action item, is it? Well, that's, that's part of the temp access permit, which we're, we're trying to approve. But I told them, because we have the cell Boston coming up, that Correct. would be you know, excavated until after the event. Excavation will not take place, though, after Perfect. the event. But the site mobilization, that's what we're trying to accomplish right. at the so moment. The yeah. medium break would not occur until after June 22nd. That was not mentioned by MassDOT. I had that conversation with Dave Belanger yesterday. Okay, so yeah, we were waiting for some responses, so, so you know. I'll follow up with Jim McGrail because he's yep. our consultant being right. in charge. Yep. Okay. Other questions or comments? No. Name your Todd. No. Members of the public. Mm -hmm. I'll entertain a motion. We'll make a motion to approve the petition by 399 Congress Street LLC for making a specific with repairs within Congress Street South Boston is read into the record by the chair. And as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repairs Plan 399 Congress Street South Boston, two sheets dated February 2017. Second. All in favor? Aye. So moved. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Fourth item is on a petition by 46 Wareham LLC for the granting of an earth retention license for the installation of a temporary earth support system. Thin Wareham Street, Boston proper, located on its northeasterly side at address number 46, generally between Harrison Ave and Albany Street. This is new business on April 27, 2017. This is as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Conceptual Temporary Excavation Support Plan, 46 Wareham Street, Boston, two sheets dated January 2017. I'm John Holland, Hall Companies, 519 Albany Street. Paul McCullough, Holland Companies. And uh, we're seeking PIC approval for the installation of a temporary earth retainage system in the public way adjacent to our project at 46 Wareham Street. The project is an approximately 67,000 square foot mixed use building comprised of commercial office and retail on the first three floors and residential condos on floors four through six with parking located below grade and automated parking system. This project has been through Article 80 large project review and an extensive public review process. It was approved by the BPTA on September 15, 2016. A construction management plan was executed on February 15, 2017 and has since been implemented. Demolition of the existing structure commenced this week. The new foundation system will consist of reinforced concrete grade beams supported by new treated wood piles. The Holland Companies have retained McPhail Associates as the project's geotechnical and geoenvironmental geo engineers. McPhail has prepared a conceptual, conceptual temporary earth retainage system that consists of cantilevered soldier piles and wood lagging. To allow sufficient room for construction activities, the soldier piles would be located a maximum of three feet from the property line in the public way adjacent to Wareham Street. Following completion of construction activities, the soldier piles will be cut 
at a level six feet below the proposed final sidewalk elevation. In the east is really the Gcot area, groundwater conservation overlay district. I'm not sure. Yes, it is. It is. And we have, a, we have an approved plan by Boston Water and Sewer to recharge water. Are you putting it in, so does it go through? Uh, this would, that should, would be a future action, um, how they're going to handle the, this the is just, water yeah, this is just our earth retention. Rails. Yeah, this is just our earth retention. Other questions or comments? And your top members of the public. Right. I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the petition by 46 Wareham LLC for the granting of an earth retention license for the installation of a temporary earth support system within Wareham Street, also proper, located on the east side of address number 46, showing between Harrison Avenue and Albany Street, new business on 427 2017. Sharon on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works, Engineering Division, Conceptual Temporary Excavation Support Plan, 46 Wareham Street, Boston, two sheets dated January 2017. The next item is on a petition by 255 State Street LLC for the making of specific repairs within State Street, Boston proper located on its southerly side, east of Atlantic Ave, consisting of sidewalk reconstruction and the removal of existing planters, street trees, and landscaping. This was new business on April 27, 2017. This is as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repair Plan, 255 State Street, Boston, one sheet dated April 2017. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. I'm Peter Kohansky from Goulston and Stores. I'm here on behalf of 255 State Street LLC, which is the owner of this building. Um, I'm joined by uh, Patrick Lee, representing the restaurant operator, uh, State Street Provisions, as well as Terry McNeil of Pembroke Real Estate, representing the owner of the building, and John Schmidt from Niche Engineering. Uh, the property is located at the southeasterly intersection of State Street and Atlantic Avenue. We are here seeking approval of improvements to the sidewalk and cafe area on the State Street side of the building. Uh, to install new brick sidewalks, remove and replace existing uh, tree pits. Since new business, we have prepared and submitted a pedestrian study. And uh, um, if there are questions, I'll take them now, or I can turn it over to John for more detail on the specific repairs. So we're essentially removing three, uh, sorry, four raised tree planters um, along State Street and installing wire foot bricks that will provide a clear and complete access when restaurant operations are not functioning. Uh, and then we're also proposing a similar raised planter in this area here to match the uh, geometry of the other. John, the, the new wire cut bricks, John, what are the limits of the wire cut bricks? Is it just where the planters were, or is it, is it for that whole area? How is it going to The wire bricks are proposed as an infill to where the planters are. Weird. Okay. User. <laughs> Wonderful space, State Street. So this is right by Atlantic Avenue. It is the gateway to State Street. That whole corridor, we took the artery down so that things can improve. And my concern is the bricks that are there are not the best. It is the old styles and hard. It's a tripping hazard. So you are just going to replace the pockets, the three pockets that have the landscape areas with the wire cuts and everything else is going to be the same way they are. And visually, it might be a bit of a clash. Um, do you have any consideration to do a little bit more so that the area is at least somewhat uniform? Because we are trying to remove the, not remove, replace the awkward looking non wire cut bricks. John, can you fill in the... Yeah, and um, the old convention bricks, the joints are the wider wire cuts are very tight. Aesthetically, it's going to look different. Wire cut provides better accessible access to the bricks that are out there now. Um, so the desire would be to replace as many bricks as you can um, with the wire cut to provide nice smooth access to the area. Um, it's, it's not the sort of thing I should be asking at the public hearing, but do give some consideration simply because of the location of your property, 
at the throne of State Street. Yeah. Okay, because um, because by the, the subjoint or the L sub, you know, it's, it's one thing, but you are right. At I mean, we we intend to be at this location for a long period of time. So our goal over those years is to make that area uh, as, as good as it as can possible. be. Yeah. So any assistance you can to make it visually appealing and a better pedestrian experience will be much appreciated by it us. It also makes better for tables and chairs. Yes. 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 I mean, I'm trying to say this thing in the most gentlest way to help people yeah. understand what it needs to be. Yeah. And if you are introducing a more pedestrian element, yeah. would truly appreciate it if you can give it the consideration it's needed. Yeah, I mean, we certainly have the same goal here. I think probably for the first year, we want to see how it all kind of works out. Okay. But I think moving forward, we certainly want to move in that direction. Yes, because we, the city, are looking at State Street to punch it out, you know, to make it more of a, a great street. Great. Okay? Yeah. And so we will need your help, and it will be nice if you can do right in front of your doorstep mm -hmm. to help us. We will. Thank you, sir. I believe it was brought up before with the water main and the location that it's in and just the understanding of yeah, um, we've we've heard water and sewers requests for uh, provision in the in the new LMI. Um, I guess that's sort of on the next on the next agenda item is where we would we we would think about covering that uh, for the cafe indemnity. Yeah, and I think that we're going to add, add that language as standard, standard language in all of our sidewalk cafe LMIs. Perfect. A motion. I'll make a motion to approve a petition by 255 State Street LLC for the making of specific repairs within State Street, Boston proper, located on its southerly side, east of Atlantic Avenue, consisting of sidewalk reconstruction and the removal of existing planters, street trees and landscaping, new business 427-2017, as shown in a set of plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repairs Plan. 255 State Street, Boston, one sheet dated April 2017. Second motion. All there. Aye. 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 So moved. The next item is on a petition by 255 State Street, LLC, for the granting of a sidewalk cafe license for seasonal outdoor seating within the following public ways in Boston proper. This was new business on April 27, 2017. The public ways are State Street on the southerly side, east of Atlantic Avenue, and Atlantic Avenue on its easterly side, south of State Street. This is as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Sidewalk Cafe License Plan, 255 State Street, Boston, one sheet dated April 2017. Thank you, Peter Kohansky, again on behalf of 255 State Street, LLC. Um, in connection with the specific repairs we just uh, described, we're seeking approval of a new cafe license um, for the modifications to the cafe area and, and furnishings. There's an existing cafe license in place with the restaurant operator uh, that covers both the Atlantic Avenue piece and the State Street piece. Um, we're proposing to amend that agreement to reflect the new plans and also to cover the water and sewer uh, issue raised previously. Can you just walk us through what the difference is sure. between the existing license and what you guys are asking for? Uh, essentially, the existing license uh, includes Atlantic Ave here and one row of tables. Um, or we have one row of tables along the building here that because it's confined by the, the planter beds. With the removal of the planters, we are extending the cafe out to the edge of the planter. Yep. So the accessible public sidewalk will be the same as it is um, when we're done studying the pedestrian. So the pedestrian level of service was submitted, uh, reviewed by my engineering staff, and although some of the you know projected uh, volumes, you know, a little bit high, obviously we're, we have no problem with going forward with this. And under the, the terms and conditions of the license anyway, if it becomes an issue, we can work with the team to reorganize it. Any other questions or comments? No. Name your talk. No. Yeah. Members of the public? All right. I'll entertain a motion. I have a motion to approve the petition by 255 State Street LLC for the granting of the sidewalk cafe license for the seasonal outdoor seating within the following 
Public Ways of Boston proper, uh, proper as read into the record by the chair, and as shown on the plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Sidewalk Cafe, License Plan, 255 State Street, Boston, one sheet gate in April 2017. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So Thank moved. You. Thank, Thank you. you. The next item is on a petition by Rufus Rusco LLC for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Dorchester, consisting of curb and sidewalk reconstruction, as well as new and relocated landscape planters and driveway curb cuts. Uh, this was new business on April 27, 2017. The locations are Batchelder Street on its eastly side between East Cottage Street and Long Meadow Street, and East Cottage Street on its northerly side east of Batchelder Street. As that's shown on a plan entitled City of Austin Public Works Department, Engineering Division Specific Repair Plan 21-27 Batchelder Street, Dorchester and East Cottage Street, one sheet dated March 17th, 2017. Good morning. morning. My name is Kelly Robbins. I'm with Hacon Building. Uh, we're the general contractor for this Rufus Roscoe project. Um, this building is actually an old brick warehouse that we're renovating for our use as office space. It's located in a um, somewhat of a residential neighborhood and uh, going through the community process they asked us to keep in mind that we were located in a residential neighborhood and to um, incorporate some landscaping accordingly. Um, so we have added some um, planters, as you'll see in our plan, to make the streetscape feel a little bit more warm and welcoming as opposed to just a um, generic office space. Um, we're also here to ask for permission to um, add two new curb cuts. Currently there are three curb cuts. We'd like to uh, eliminate two of them and add two curb cuts, one um, on Batchelder Street and one on each co East Cottage Street for use of our parking area for employees and also for our visiting clients. So there's no net change in the actual number of curb cuts? It's a reduction of one. Reduction there's three currently, yes. Three. Okay. Can you talk a little bit more about some of the pedestrian or public realm improvements that you guys are making? I'm sorry? Uh, can you talk about some of the pedestrian and public realm improvements you guys are making to make the, the space uh, a little more vibrant space? We have, I mean, outside of the wooden planters that you'll see on the, the PIC improvement plan, we have sort of taken a corner of our parking area on the corner of East Cottage and Batchelder Street and have decided to do some additional planting and treescapes there. Um, so I think once, you know, the property is finished, first it'll be a vast improvement to what it is now, which is sort of an abandoned warehouse. But secondly, um, you know, I think it re really will f sort of um, feel like it fits more with the residential nature of the neighborhood. AV Steel License LMI, Tom, yes. sorry, has a maintenance agreement. Do we have a maintenance agreement? Yes, yes. We, we have. We do have. We are working on one. Yeah. Uh, to the best of your knowledge, I don't remember the streets that front your property. Are they one-way streets or are they two-way streets? To the best of your recollection. That's a good. That's a good question. My recollection is that Batchelder is no, a. Let me put things in context oh, okay. because your new driveway that fronts Long Meadow Street. So be mindful of whether Long Meadow is a one-way street, two-way street, or a one-way street heading in the opposite direction because your driveway entrance lines up with it. I see. Okay? So just yep. give a tiny bit of consideration over there. Okay. Because I can't figure out which consultant is. So you, have. I suppose Mr. Hardy, Sean Hardy, needs to look at that. I'm trying to see who stamp your plans. Okay. And the plans for the pedestrian ramps at the corner of East Cottage and Batchelder? Yes. Right. Other questions or comments? Amy or Tuck? Members of the public? All right. I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the petition by Rufus Roscoe, LLC, for making specific repairs within the following public ways in Dorchester consisting of curb, sidewalk reconstruction, as well as new and relocated landscape planners and drive, driveway curb cuts. All, all is read into the record by the chair and is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repairs Plan 2127 Bachelor uh, Street, Dorchester and East Cottage Street, one sheet dated March 17, 2017. Second. Aye. So moved. The next item is on a petition by Rufus Roscoe, LLC, for the granting of a projection license for the installation of a canopy and lighting fixtures 
over portions of the sidewalk within Bachelor Street, Dorchester, located on the easterly side at address number 21-27, generally between East Cottage Street and Long Meadow Street. This was new business on April 27, 2017, and this is as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Projection License Plan 21-27 Bachelor Street, Dorchester, one sheet dated March 17, 2017. Uh, so as part of our plan in front of our office entry, we'd like to add an aluminum canopy over the uh, entry door. It has been lighting. I know they are adding lighting fixtures. Just want to make sure it's... Yeah, it's just their logo with no. the light. It's, that's no, no, no. It. They, they actually have an exterior lighting fixtures oh, for the yes. wall mount. So uh, Yes, uh, we have an OK from true lighting. Other questions or comments? No. I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve a petition by Rufus Roscoe, LLC, for the granting of a projection license for the installation of a canopy and lighting fixtures over portions of the sidewalk within Batch Elder Street, Dorchester, located on its easterly side at address number 21 to 27, generally between East Cottage Street and Long Meadow Street. New business 427-2017, shown in a, on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Projection License Plan, 21 to 27 Batchelder Street, Dorchester, one sheet dated March 17, 2017. Second. All in favor? So moved. Thank you. Thank you. The next item, is, next item is on a petition by Big Night Vent uh, Venues Boston 5 LLC for the granting of a projection license for the installation of a canopy and awnings over portions of the sidewalk within Tremont Street, Boston proper, located on its easterly side north of Boylston Street. This was new business on April 27, 2017. This is as shown on a set of plans in, uh, entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Projection License Plan 186 Tremont Street, Boston proper, two sheets dated. May 5th, 2017. Uh, my name is Bob Stansel from Beacon Architectural Associates, and I'm rep representing uh, Big Night Venues uh, at this hearing. Um, the application for projection license for the uh, construction of on a combination of four awnings, two retractable awnings and two fixed awnings, and a glass and uh, steel fixed canopy. Uh, Excuse me, sir, if you could introduce the Sorry, Kristen Scanlon, legal counsel for Big Night Venues. Sorry. I brought uh, today some photographs of the existing condition, and I know you have the existing plan. This is the area that we're talking about where these blue mosaic tiles are located in that area from the open up and replace it. The canopies you see on those drawings will be in these five, uh, excuse me, the, the canopy will be in this location, the glass. Uh, canopy and the awnings will be in these four uh, existing locations. This is a close up of those areas, and I think there are uh, planters that are shown on that drawing as well. And I, I wanted to show today the planters are going in place of these masonry bases, and they're currently not over the property. They're shown, they're shown on the survey of the property. I'm just curious, I admire your building for a long time. The purpose of these canopies are for what purpose? Because why are you installing these canopies? So these these uh, these will be new restaurant windows. And this is a west. Ah, sorry, I should go. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, because if you are activating that space, right. because there's a school, university, and there's a massive pedestrian circulation right. challenge over there, and we are trying to understand what is the best way to manage that space. These are also retractable. True, no, no, but I'm more curious as to the fact that you are activating the ground floor by punching out. Right. Am I misreading or are you? Okay, right. So if you could just enlighten us a little bit more as to how the. Thank you, sir. So the, the entrance to the restaurant will be in this center bay. Um, these will be operable glass windows. There's no seating in front of the restaurant. On the sidewalk and not asking for any use of that sidewalk other than the So the primary use of the awnings is for sun control. 
we were we reviewed this. Uh, Mr. Kane has been up to my office, and we see this is a, a great uh, benefit and uh, obviously a you know enlightenment of the area in general. It it really is going to bring a lot of character and life to the area. So we appreciate that, and hope eventually we will manage demonstrate also so that the pedestrian experience may be a little bit more than the bit of the sidewalks right now. Okay. Get it a bit wider. How does the six foot projection of the awnings compare to the Emerson building? Uh, next to uh, it looks somewhat similar, but you see in this photograph uh, this yeah. is out about seven feet. Got it. So we're gonna be stepped in a little bit. Stepped in quite a bit. This may have already been covered in new business, but uh, things like handling icicles, uh, water drainage, all those sort of things, you feel Sorry? you feel like things like icicle formation, snowfall, uh, you are the, the awnings and the uh, entrance to the restaurant itself are uh, prepared to appropriately handle any precipitation. Correct, and the awnings will be retractable and they will be Perfect. pulled back right. and you can, the glass canopy uh, yeah. slopes back to the building and there is an internal drain. Right. Any other questions or comments? Amy or Todd? Members of the public? All right, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the petition by Big Night Venues Boston 5 LLC for the granting of a projection license for the installation of a canopy and awnings over portions of the sidewalk within Tremont Street, Boston proper, located on its easterly side north of Boylston Street. All is shown a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Projection license plan 186 Tremont Street, Boston proper, two sheets dated May 5th, 2017. Second. All in favor? Aye. So moved. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to new business. The first item is Brookline Ave, Yaki Way, Lansdowne Street, Boston. Specific repairs on a petition by Old Town Team Realty LC. Dennis Quilty, attorney at McDermott Quilty and Miller. <clears throat> Representing the property owner with me is Kelly Carr from Beta, uh, who just reminded me this is our fifth year of coming before you for these uh, ornamental safety bollards. They began in 2013, uh, and they have extended at uh, various stages around Fenway Park. And this is, uh, for those of you who were not around, for those, this was a MLB mandated safety precaution that every park in the uh, major leagues is required to undertake. <clears throat> Excuse me, so this uh, plan before you uh, is uh, the Lansdowne Street, Brookline Avenue, um, and um, yeah. 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 I'm sorry, uh, sections of those areas uh, as on the plans. I will suggest that we came before you for 13 of these boll bollards. And I don't, some of you may have been on the email trail from yesterday, but we were asked by Comcast and Water and Sewer to remove to, or to not place two of them because of uh, underlined future plans in that area. So it is now 11 bollards, not 13 bollards. And the two that are removed are uh, the easiest way to describe it is at the corner of uh, Lansdowne and Brookline on the um, Cask and Flagon side of the street. The two that were farthest down Lansdowne Street, we're, we were asked to remove those uh, it, to accommodate Comcast and future water and sewer uh, work in the area. So with your permission, we would like to amend the application from 13 to 11, and we can provide whatever updated documents. You, you just need to give us the form of 11 for Mylar's. Yeah. Davis, will this be it? I know we. Will you have to come back to us for more bollocks around them? We, or is this uh, evolving? I, I think it is kind of an evolving matter. I mean, we're just sitting there discussing ourselves, the, the head of Yaki, or both ends of Yaki Way, if you will, which of course is, you know, for practical purposes, is part of the park during, you know, use of the park. And of course, it's wide open. Um, 
So that, that I think, is a, poses a whole other set of problems because it is, it's a, you know, the street itself might have to be blocked, which is, I, I don't know. That's why. Right, um, I'm Kelly Carpenter. Sorry. But um, the purpose of these particular bollards is to um, help when, when they do close down Yaki Way and lands down, they put a barrier across, a temporary barrier across the road. But this is to keep vehicles from jumping the curb okay. and coming into crowds of people. Which we didn't have that reason when we started five years ago. <laughs> so what about, you know, and this is a mandate from MLB, how about uh, Van Ness and uh, Ipswich Street? Why are there no bollards there? Uh, there are bollards. I think the very first program that we came before you with was the Van Ness Gate D, uh, which, of course, if you visualize it, is kind of an open shot from Boylston into the park. If you didn't have these, that was the first area done. Right. But all the way but down, not, not your correct. But all the way down Van Ness, that's all open. You're correct. And then around the back of, of the park as well. Right, on the back side of the park. So I, I'm. They're not mandating anything like that? Oh, no, I think uh, these are things that are, that are contemplated. I think that area, a lot of that area is at the very least fenced off. It's where they park uh, some of the um, sound uh, and, and television trucks. So that a lot of that area is at least fenced, whereas and much of these. Yeah. Yes. I, I, but I, right now it's like, I, I, I just don't know. Right. Okay, that's fair. So on the, you're proposing bollards in front of a different property. In front of the cask and flagon. Yeah, they've been working. Been working with them on this plan. Yeah, I have. Uh, Not with the owners of cask and flag. We've um, worked with all of the utilities and the agencies. Right, because all all the uh, existing bollards are around your property. Correct. This Correct. seems a little different. That it, it, it is. It's. It's. It extends. It, of course, it's city sidewalk because they they do have an outdoor a seating area, and this is substantially distant from that. But um, I don't know, I mean, I actually, on other matters, represent the Cascan Flagon, so I will certainly, I will make outreach to them myself. Perfect. Wanted to clarify, too, the exchange yesterday by email, there was some revisions to plans that I think will supersede these with clarification on um, the commission not participating in Dig Safe, and with our 48-inch water main in such close proximity, um, we need to be contacted for markouts and you know prior to any excavation as well. I think there's a, a note added. Um, we have shallow cover on that water main, and he explained that it is hand dug once you get past the sidewalk. Yes. We definitely yes. want hand digging. Um, yes, sir. Understood. And we did add that to the, um, to the updated plan, which we will give you a copy of uh, for the, and, uh, we'll give that to you this Friday. But this one also shows that. And then we also have the, um, the uh, temporary uh, traffic control plan for the plan when those are installed. If you could add the note about hand digging just directly to the plan, I think it Yes, we did, we did add it to the plan. It has been added to yeah. this plan, um, along with contacting um, Boston Water and Sewer. Right. And we will also um, tell the contractor to make sure he contacts you and lets you know the day that he'll be there. That's great. Yeah. There was one other thing that came up this morning. Uh, I checked with Todd. The, the ownership of these, if they stay with the Red Sox, so um, like if, when the day comes we have to work on our water main, there will be a removal reset request by the owner. Yes. Yeah, all of these are in a kind of a rolling agreement because they've come each year. Um, so we have one agreement for all of these bollards. If you ever need to do work, they've got to come out and go back in. Right. Um, but at the, not at, not not at Solis expense. Correct. It's yeah. right. So they will be responsive to their needs in a timeline to their satisfaction, remediated to their satisfaction. Yes. yes. Looking specifically at the balls on uh, Yaki Way, uh, close to Yaki Way, uh, if somebody is going from Yaki Way towards Brookline Ave and wants to essentially cross the street to uh, Yaki Way, what is currently Yaki Way Extension, um, the, uh, it seems like each of those balls are placed at five foot six intervals. Do you know what the actual sort of dimension is for somebody who is looking to proceed in a straight line? Which is, yes, and, and does that mean essentially our, our commissions for persons with disabilities uh, have to travel standards? Right, and we did have some back and forth with them, and I answered her question saying that all of these have a definite five foot minimum clearance. 
Do you know if it will require somebody to essentially angle, or if they want to continue straight down Yaki Way, because the balls are at an angle? Do you know if it, the, 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 the path of travel, sorry, I might explain this as clearly as I should be, but um, exactly. So if you're coming from the bottom, so you're talking about if the either way, exactly, is. exactly right. Um, How do you have an angle? Because right. the path of travel is an angle. Sorry. The opening will be smaller on an angle. Exactly. Right. Yes. And I'm wondering if, because they're smaller on an angle, will they, will that uh, length be essentially less than the minimum distance that we require? So what's the horizontal distance yeah. between the bollards that are on so an I, angle? I can't answer that right now without a scale. That's fine. Just put those dimensions, of the, the yeah, the space that you have to go through perpendicularly, like okay. uh, on the plan. Then you just make sure that beta adjusts it. Exactly. So that it is not an inconvenience for someone who has to right. mobilize right. it. That manner is a person, uh, someone who is on foot, can rotate on a faster axis. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Two weeks be enough time? Two weeks enough time now? Yes, that would be great. Right. Thank we'll you. See you on the 25th. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, the next item is 230 Western Ave, Brighton, pedestrian easement, specific repairs on a set of petitions by the Harvard Business School. School. I am the director of uh, capital programs, and uh, we're here today to present to you the project at 230 Western Ave, which is a streetscape improvement project, uh, primarily the sidewalk in front of our Teal Hall building, which is an administrative building for Harvard Business School. And uh, this coming summer, we are restoring the exterior facade of that building, and we thought it would make sense, make sense uh, as part of that project to also redo the streetscape to match what was done previously by Harvard in front of the 224 Western Ave building right next door, which is our ceramics lab. And the work we're proposing is pretty much the new design standard in the Alston neighborhood, uh, one that was executed, as I said, at 224 Western, across the street at the Continuum Development by Samuels Associate, uh, Associates. And will also be implemented by the science and engineering complex uh, down the street on Western Ave. So it's basically just completing one more piece of that puzzle in front of Teal Hall. And uh, we have retained the firm of uh, Niche Associates as our civil engineer and Reed Hildebrand Associates, who are here today to provide some detail on what the project consists of. Great. Uh, Set with the schematic that is there because I see another row of. So the, the, this row of trees falls within the site, so it'll be outside That's what the property. I'm, so those are on private property? Right. Actually, the property line it falls down pretty much down the center of the concrete sidewalk, and that's the aspect of this. And Mr. Hester, I'm going to do a site line study for the public. Area. Thank you. <laughs> Well, the species selection will obviously match whether it is on private property or public right. property or to be maintained by the good university. Right. Yeah. The, uh, the CMP is in the works and a contractor would select shortly once that selection happens. Yeah, just on the CMP, I, I, 
Uh, once you get that contractor on board, I want to make sure that he's in agreement with the construction management plan. So often, you know, we generally have the general contractor do the CMP, but, uh, you know, I don't want to box him in. If he's, he only come, he's coming back to me midway through the project saying he can't build it. So. Yes, and that's our, you know, that's our delay on the CMP right now is we'd like to get our contractor on board. Yep. Based on the amount of traffic in that area, we want the contractor to work with us to develop the CMP, be part of that team. So when we present it to you, it's uh, everybody's on board and there's no disagreements about the plan. Perfect. And I think we're probably two weeks out on that. That might be a good task for Greg Beaner to carry out there. Okay. Just to say. That's good. John, can you speak ever so quickly to the street lighting? Fixtures within that. Yeah, street lighting. Uh, street lights are uh, non-city standard. That's part of the Harvard's uh, institutional master plan, and the Harvard University, the Harvard Business School, is responsible for maintaining them and replacing them. Um, and they will have additional lights housed on site um, should they need to be replaced. Um, there, these lights are currently being installed at the project across the street, known as Old Down Street. Old Down Street. Street. So there are they're presently being installed and they're on site now. It's an alternating light. You have a, uh, a taller light that's 24 feet that projects into the traffic, and then a shorter light, 14 feet, that delineates the sidewalk. And then you have a shorter light that does the sidewalk, and they alternate as you get on the sidewalk. So again, approved by us, they own the lights. Hi. Uh, it's, I think it's kind of a little bit of a mixed bag with the pedestrian light and the street lights. Um, so the fixture, if it gets hit at I'll, I'll, coffee, I'll, I'll have yeah. an answer for you. Plus the also end. find out uh, whether the juice is coming from one of our street light cabinets and, and how the feeds are. Yep. yep. John. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Was there any previous correspondence with the commission regarding, regarding the like, of our sewer that's underneath all of these improvements? Yes, um, Mr. Shea, um, when this notification met him about two months ago, he had the department videotape that sewer line and put it back in the condition. Paul, I think you covered this, but the design standards that you guys are using here are similar to what Harvard is doing east of this site. Yes, they are. Do you plan on using banners on these mass stops, come on PJ, on the street light. Do you anticipate using any banners? And if so, you may want to have the connections right. in advance. I'm honestly not sure about that. Uh, so uh, This is the street light that they're perpetuating throughout Western Ave, so. Just to have the hard hardware available. Yeah, right. I'm just sure position. position will be doing it. But. Yeah. Just pre-position, just give it some thought. Yeah. So okay. this way, if you do want to advertise 400th anniversary or whatever. Okay. Okay. We'll look into that. Other questions or comments? Name your Todd. All right. Two weeks be enough then? I think so, yeah. All right. See you guys on the 25th. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The next item of new business is 14-60 Clearway Street, Roxbury, specific repairs on a petition by Forest Properties Company. Associates representing Forest Properties. Uh, with me today is uh, Dan Sterner and Nicholas Darby from Forest Properties. Uh, the petition before you uh, is for specific repairs on Clareway Street between four, uh, 14 and 60. Uh, it uh, represents a property that that uh, Forest Properties leases. It's 116 apartment units, and they're looking to make some enhancements uh, to the streetscape. Currently, there it, there are uh, 15 trees, or there were 15 trees along Clearway. Um, two are gone. One is in uh, poor shape. Our proposal would be to uh, modify the tree wells there, uh, enhance them. Right now, it's just a, a, a small granite band 
a, with a brick inside it right up against the base. We're going to bump that out to uh, about four by seven. Um, put a, a two foot high, two foot high decorative fence around that, and then do some plantings in that area around the base base of the, uh, of the tree. Um, uh, replace the, the, the two trees that are not there and in kind with the same trees along the street and, and uh, also replace the, the one that's uh, just about gone. Um, we have uh, cycled these all through departments, made some changes. Uh, one of the major changes was, was making sure that we were maintaining five feet between the building, fa the building facade and any obstruction element uh, so that we were uh, compliant with the uh, with the smart streets requirements of the city um, and uh, the ADA requirements. You said there was going to be a two foot high fence around the tree? Yeah, it's, it's just a two foot um, high aluminum wrought iron type. Um, and on, on the front side, uh, what uh, I believe it was Parks and, and Rack or Maybe it was public works. Asked us to make that section removable um, on the street side, so we'll we'll put um, pipe sleeves in, be able to do that, and then bolted connection. So there'll be two two stanchions on the on the front side on each corner, so that we can bolt those down. So that is there parking adjacent to? Uh, these? There's not. There's only parking on the opposite side. Opposite. The trees. Yes, we'll. we'll uh, and the hind, yeah. The the, the fence wood. fence and area everything uh, inside of that will be subject to a maintenance and indemnification agreement. Any questions or comments? Can you talk? Twenty fifth. Okay. Two weeks from that. Thank you. Thanks. 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 The fourth item of new business is 35 West Newton Street, Washington Street, Boston Proper, a sidewalk cafe license on a petition by Unique Concepts, Inc. My name is uh, Jim Pyatt. I'm an architect of Pyatt Associates, my own company, representing or presenting this morning for the owner of this premises, uh, Unique Concepts LLC, who is constructing a restaurant at the premises at 35 West Newton. And we are applying for a sidewalk cafe permit, as shown on the drawings that I think you have in front of you. Uh, just a little description, the space for the sidewalk cafe is approximately 50 feet long by about eight, a little over eight feet wide, including the uh, barrier, which is a mixture of chain and planter. And um, there'll be 32 seats. We provided for handicapped seating. We've provided a level of pedestrian service, which seems to say that we're okay. Um, there are sidewalk cafes on the other two corners. On Stella, Stella's, and Stella's and Flower um, and that's our presentation. Well, the whole um, installation will be moved in the uh, winter time. There's no permanent fixture, no attachment to the pavement. Um, the uh, service will basically be semi self service. You go in, you order your food, and then a wait person will bring it out to you, and then they will also manage cleaning up after customers. Our presentation list. Any questions? Oh, and I should introduce myself. We have Mr. Rafi Festjakian. He's the owner, and Alex Backrack, who will be the manager of the restaurant. Uh, this sort of design program along is sort of used in other places in the South End, the sort of the box and chain uh, design. Yeah. Is it somewhat consistent with uh, Flower and Stella? Or? I'm trying to, I mean, a lot of places just have a post and a chain, but it'd be the same type of chain, black. And some places do have the uh, similar kind of rectangular planters. 
basically mean the height of the chains was a function of EDA requirements and ISD. I forget what those numbers were. So, the, so the, the issue is. They did provide elevations and they did meet a requirements for detection. Okay, so if I'm visually impaired and walking with a cane, I will know at what time. Yes, part. and also the pledges that we're proposing also help with key detection. Okay. So um, we did so you are all. Informational discussion, uh, citywide, an updated standard form for PIC license, maintenance, and indemnification agreements uh, for a presentation by the City of uh, Boston Law Department. Sorry, wait, John. Keep, keep early early. We, if not, so, so, so. We certainly appreciate I appreciate your efforts to make our LMIs clear and consistent and sustainable uh, over time. So John, just just so that we are on record, our sunset clauses, our sunset, yes. our divorce laws, yes. points of accountability, responsibility, all will be updated. Yeah, so they're going to remain unchanged. It's just going to read a lot clearer as so to how it flows. works. Yes. Right. So one, one of the questions that I had, and it happens routinely, say on Huntington Avenue or on Cambridge Street, there's an LMI for maintenance, the medians. They just routinely show up during uh, you know rush hour in the traffic. I mean, it's a great thing they're doing, but I, I don't think it exempts them from pulling a permit, although the fees may be wide, uh, waived. But I guess, a, is that covered in that? I don't believe it is, but I think it probably should I be. Think it, okay, so check it, Chong, because when we started this, they yes. still have to, their course of doing maintenance doesn't preclude them from doing business the correct and proper way. They still have to pull the necessary permits, and that, that has not been waived. Okay. So just check we'll, that we'll part. Put it, well, that's a good idea. Okay. We'll put that yeah. in there. Yeah. So if it is not there, put it. If it is there, amplify it. Yeah. Okay. So that's why this discussion is uh, Thank you. Is so helpful. Yep. Okay. Any other questions? You can always call me. Uh, you can always call me over where I am. But I have a question I will talk to you folks. A lot of the provisions, the uh, question I want to store or stay in the same place, stay in the, the same place in the end of the paper. And I will talk to you for uh, your information. Yeah. 
we have some standard language that Steve added, but you can review that, and then we're going to make sure that it gets into the standard cafe nice. license. Yeah. All right. We look forward to seeing the uh, finished product in June. Yeah. Thank you, John. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.